Welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's go back in history to the year 1961. It was on this day that one of uh, Nigeria's, well, currently most famous uh, politicians and former governor of Anambra State, uh, Peter Obi, was born in 1961 on this day. He, of course, um, you know, if you remember, very not very long ago in 2019, was the vice presidential candidate of the PDP in the last elections. But we'll just go back a little bit to share um, just a little, um, you know, tiny bit on Peter Obi. He was born on this day, 19th of July, 1961. Um, is a Nigerian politician and businessman who, of course, uh, was vice presidential candidate in 2019. Um, he, of course, is former governor of Anambra State that served from 17th of March 2006 to the 2nd of November 2006 when he was impeached. And then, of course, uh, when that impeachment was overturned, returned from the 9th of February 2007, uh, to the uh, 29th of May 2007, he then, of course, uh, got another four-year tenure after um, he won that uh, court case. Um, he, you know, of course, is known to be a successful, very successful businessman who was a chairman of Next International Nigeria Limited, chairman and director of then of a Guardian Express Mortgage Bank, Guardian Express Bank PH, uh, um, PLC, Future View Securities Limited, Paymaster Nigeria Limited, Champs Nigeria Limited, so many of them. And also, at, at some point, was also res, um, appointed chairman of the Security and Exchange Commission by former President Goodluck Jonathan after the 2015 general elections. So we say happy birthday to Peter Obi. He is, of course, uh, one of those governors from the Southeast or one of those politicians from the Southeast who has, you know, reasonably had a very, very clean record mm -hmm. and has also been um, praised for being the one who transformed, you know, a, a lot with regards to um, Anambra State um, Anambra's economy and uh, the, the um, infrastructural development in Anambra in time that he was also there. He was, um, you know, um, his ideas and some of the things that he had mentioned in the build-up to the elections in 2019 are some of the things that, you know, the current is, the government is currently still, of course, looking at uh, today. So happy birthday to you, uh, Peter Obi, and uh, we wish him many, many, many more years um, uh, on Earth. Indeed, happy birthday to him. Um, let's now go to the year 2017. And on this day in history, there was a, you know, a requirement by the government for organizations to review the salaries of their staff, their workers. And on this day in history, uh, July 19th, 2017, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, published um, the salaries of its top earning journalists and presenters. And we found that this was two-thirds male, Chris Evans' um, salary was the highest at over £2.2 .2 million. Pounds. This was big. <laughs> oh, sorry, are you crying? You can't compare your salary, first of all, as a Nigerian to theirs out of the country. So please don't cry. You might get there. Just work hard enough and relocate, maybe. <laughs> what is he doing that I'm not doing? <laughs> a <What>? lot. <laughs> a whole lot. What is he doing? Do you have the accent, first of all? <laughs> so um, back to the story. Um, this list that the BBC published was a list of 96 stars journalists and presenters who earn between £150,000 or $195,000 or more per year. You don't need to be depressed about that. Come on, it's a bit better for us here in Nigeria. You know, and together, their earnings total more than £30 million. Pounds. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, the 94-year-old broadcaster had been, you know, facing pressure to release details about their... Um, spending about how the uh, the, li the TV license fee is being spent, and of this 96 list, 96 man list or 96 people list, only 34 of them were women. The remaining 62 were men. The salaries of female presenters were largely, largely dwarfed by their male counterpart. Their male counterpart earned much, much more. So when you see presenters like that on your screen, the man is receiving a higher pay than the woman, most likely, you know, according to what we saw on that list. So overall, 25% of men on that list receive more than £250,000 per year, compared to just nine women. Now, this announcement raised more, more questions than it answered, because, you know, the answer, the questions were for you to release, you know, the list. Let's see how the TV license fee has been spent. Let's see what the money is going in. So you release this list and people have more questions, like why are men receiving more than women. I mean, they both are anchoring the same show yeah. or working in the same place, doing the same amount of work. Maybe the woman even does more, you know? So it just raised a lot. 
regarding the gender equality, um, the more pay, the gender gap um, story, the gender gap you know, conversation you gender know, became really gap. big at that time. And I found that people who did lots of work in the station, like production assistants and runners, people who played a huge role in the success of production and like the least you know, so it was in this day in history that the BBC made this reveal and it really, really shaped the course of conversation regarding, you know, regarding gender pay and how women should begin to demand for more and how they should receive more if, you know, they're doing, you know, equal or even more work than the men. So it was in this day in history that we saw this, you know, big reveal in the media. Oh, well, not necessarily more work, um, but as long as you're doing the same, you know, job, you should earn, you know, the same. And I, and I agree um, that, um, you know, that there should be, uh, you know, there, there should be better conversations with regards to gender pay gap. We've had um, uh, some crisis in sports, you know, before, but people have always argued against, uh, you know, the sports one because uh, the earnings with male sports is always, you know, has always, you know, relatively been way higher than the earnings with female sports. And so you don't expect them to earn more or and the same thing with their male counterparts. But, you know, for TV presenters, for journalists and, um, you know, everyone in the media space who's, you know, most likely doing the same things, you know, have the same screen time. Um, uh, you know, carrying out the same research, you know, doing the same report, you know, reporting here and there, then you obviously you're definitely should sure earn, you know, pretty much the same. I don't know how they get into, you know, um, agreeing on what their wages are. For a person to be earning £2 million annually, that is just completely insane. Um, but I think it's also dependent on traffic. Um, and, um, you know, what that particular presenter, you know, brings to the station itself. And because there are particular presenters, you know, on BBC and on CNN that you mm -hmm. know, nobody even, you know, recognizes or knows that they exist. But there's the, they're also the ones that people look forward to seeing, you know, they look forward to watching. You know, it's the same screen time, but one person's, um, you know, delivery and one person's uh, uh, conversations are a lot richer than the next person's um, um, conversation. There are certain shows um, on CNN. Um, or any of, you know, not just CNN, you know, any, any, you know, international media organization that you really watch because of one particular person. You know, if Farid Zakaria, for example, you know, would, I don't think would be earning the same, same you know, um, fees with a Don Lemon because they, you know, pretty m would likely have the same screen time, but their conversations are totally different. You know, one person probably pulls in more traffic, um, you know, raises more money for the station. And so um, I believe that at some point during, you know, the course of their time there, there can be renegotiation of their contracts, you know, that would push them a lot higher than what they initially started with. Um, so I feel, um, yes, there should be, you know, some equality with but regards to But when we bring that to pay. Nigeria, you, the conversation is different because when it comes to male and female, the societal stereotype believe that the man has more responsibilities. And this is crazy because I don't really see why your family responsibilities should factor into what, you, what you know, the salary should be because it's about what you're bringing to the table. You can have a million people you're feeding, but you're not doing so much. Well, I don't necessarily agree. No, I, don't, I'm I, don't telling, think, um, I, am, I am telling you for a I fact don't think... what's, what's happening here. Okay, do you want to not ask? For a fact. Do you so, do you so, want to ask? No, hold on. So this is this is. Do you what, want to ask hiring managers? Do you want to ask? It's a fact that men earn more than women, especially in the media. It's it's a fact. It's, yeah, it's but, a, but the, the mean, challenge here is. Can't dispute so that. this is where my challenge I am, is. I'm trying to tell you that this is where it's coming from, right? No, that, that's that, what no, I don't agree on, with. I don't on. think it's because oh, your man's my, my, you know has responsibility. Listen, yeah, listen, so. Masarge, I am telling you what I know for a fact, right? They will tell you that the man has more responsibilities. They will tell you that the man is older. He has. They will tell you that oh, the woman is younger. They can't pay a 24 year old a certain amount. And what is she doing with the money? This is the stereotype that is prevalent in the Nigerian society. You can ask HR managers for confirmation. Whatever you know, their own reasons might be. I don't know, but the one I know for a fact is what I have just told you regarding well, the Nigerian um, society and why it seems. I think the challenge is you know favor men more in terms of salary. So I don't I don't argue you know with the. Um, favoritism that, that will exist or that does exist, you know, in the, you know, Nigerian space with regards pay. Um, I, I would agree that that does exist. You know, one of the things that we likely will be talking about today is, you know, the fact that there's seven bank MDs now in Nigeria, you know, w which everyone is talking about. 20, that's just 27% uh, compared to all the banks, you know, which normally should not even be something that we should have a conversation about because it should be normal that, you know, men and women should be able to reach that, you know, height and, you know, there's nothing, it shouldn't be a big deal. So I don't agree that, I don't um, disagree that there is that, you know, disparity with regards pay. But my, my, I don't, what 
um, I have a challenge with is what is you calling it a fact that the reason is because they say that men have more responsibility. I said the reason in my, from my own experience. Well, still not a fact. From my experience, um, that's... Um, <laughs> my experience is a fact, so sorry, Gay. So, I don't know whatever so, you might have heard. So if you've heard your own um, ex reasons why people or HR managers would pay men more, you can, you can share that with, with, with I us. I don't know if HR managers, you know, would decide to pay a man higher simply because, you know, a man has more responsibilities. I think it's still very, very dependent on um, value. And nobody has goes to an interview and says, oh, you know, how many kids do you have? How many wives do you have? Okay, so, so we'll pay you one million a month because you have two wives. So why do you think they pay men more it, in Nigeria? In every, I think in every, in, in, in the, at the level that we are, in every um, discussion with regards pay, there's always some level of negotiation. And if you get to that seat and you have a negotiation that says you want to be paid a million naira a month and... That is approved. That's what you earn. If the next person comes in and says, oh, he wants to be paid 200000 a month, that is going to be approved. So it's really about what the company at that time, um, the value of the company at that time feels that you're going to bring in. And if they think that you're worth it and if they can afford, you know, that person and the value that you're bringing in. It's not necessarily because they look at you and say, oh, you're a man, so you have more responsibility, so let's pay you a million a month. Okay. Or you're a woman, so you don't have responsibility, let's pay 100000 a month. I don't think that's how it happens. I think it's really about the, the negotiation with regard to salary at that time. I don't think that Nigerian, the Nigerian workspace has a standard, you know, including in the media where they, with which they pay salaries. I don't think there's a particular standard which is, okay, if you're going to be on this level, then this is what you're going to earn. Um, in the federal government, um, on, on, in, in federal government, um, you know, uh, jobs, uh, public, you know, uh, service, is, is there a, a standard for level 13 female and level 13 male? I don't think there is. If you're on level 13, you're on level 13, <laughs> and that's what you're going to earn. So there's no allowance for husband and allowance for wife or allowance for man and allow for allowance for woman. So we do need that standard in organizations like the media, don't we? Well, still depends on value and what you bring in. There should be, you know, some level, some standard. I, I understand and I would agree with that. But um, at the same time, <laughs> at every discussion, you know, for employment, there is always that negotiation that goes on with regards pay. There's females that I know earn <laughs> 10 times... <laughs> what i earn you know and we're still in the same space it's and, really, it just depends on the the the, 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 the it depends on where you are and the, and the 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 ability of that company to be able to pay you what you're asking for if you walk into any office and you tell them you don't want to earn anything less than two million hour a month and they feel that you're going to bring that value then yes they will give you two million hour a month um, they're not going to say oh, you have who know the woman has that value i will still refuse to give her what she's worth. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't so argue that there's that's mis the, misogynistic... That's the challenge um, of our society. Um, but these employers are <laughs> male and female. It's not just men who employ. So it's also females who, from your argument, there's also mm. females who look at other women and say, oh, you don't have responsibility, so let's pay you up with 50000 a month. It's a societal mindset that really needs to... Not a fact, to, though. To, to, ...to change. All right. We'll take a break here and return with our first big conversation regarding INEC and the electronic transmission of votes. Do stay with us.